I'm the proud dad of a five-month-old girl, but being a five-month-old, she tends to cry. It doesn't matter if it's 3 p.m. or 3 a.m. because this is the best way for her to get her parents' attention. A new study from Sandra Thigson and co-workers at Leiden University reports the impact of vasopressin on the neural processing of crying on brain activity in expectant fathers. I spoke with senior author of the study, Marion Bakermans Cranenberg, about why her team chose to investigate fathers instead of mothers, and about vasopressin's role in parenting. And most studies on parenting focus on mothers, and uh, that feels a bit unfair for half of the parents are fathers. So that's why we started a series of studies on fathers. Then why vasopressin? Well, in the animal world, vasopressin is related to protection, protection of the offspring. And that's, of course, necessary for their survival. Um, so we expected that the administration of vasopressin by giving fathers a sniff of vasopressin would make them more alert to infant cry sounds. In this study, expectant fathers listen to cries during the collection of brain activity data. Participants also heard a neutral sound which had all the auditory qualities of an infant crying, like intensity and overall spectral content, but without the emotional meaning of an infant cry. This neutral sound was something like a saw. Here's Marion again. We found that indeed, after a sniff of vasopressin, fathers showed more reactivity to infant cry sounds in their medial prefrontal cortex which may imply that higher vasopressin levels prepare fathers to become active when their babies need them. This effect of vasopressin was more pronounced in fathers that experienced more supportive parenting while they were growing up. This demonstrates the important role of environment when it comes to how social information is processed in the brain. When it comes to hormone peptides, it seems like vasopressin always plays second fiddle to oxytocin, which is strange when you consider how closely related these two peptides are, as both of these peptides evolved from the same ancestral peptide. I don't think this disparity is necessarily due to vasopressin having less of an impact on human behavior than oxytocin. Rather, I think this is due to oxytocin being historically known as a prosocial hormone, even though this is now known not to be true. And this has given oxytocin a disproportionate amount of attention because, hey, who doesn't like a hormone that's purported to increase prosocial behaviors? He's hoping that this kind of work encourages more researchers to look at vasopressin's role in the processing of social information in humans.